Welcome to Plant Your Seed. I'm your host, Fred Ferris. On each episode, we share stories of how ordinary people have transformed their lives. Each story is compassionate, each story is authentic, and each story is a transformation. Here are the stories of the people who are changing our world by transitioning to a plant-based diet. Today on Plant Your Seed, joining us from Aix-en-Provence in France is Manu Endo. Manu is a French triathlete who is working on accomplishing an Ironman. An Ironman is a triathlon race which consists of a 2.4-mile swim, a 112-mile bike, and a 26.2-mile run. Welcome, Manu. Hello, Fred. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here on Plant Your Seed. I really appreciate it. Can you tell us how you got into being a triathlete? Sure. So um, I used to play um, other sports uh, like soccer. I also played for a few years American football. And uh, at one point, uh, my body told me that I should uh, maybe go a little bit easier on uh, on sport and especially um, sport with contact like uh, American football. Uh, that actually I should call football here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in France, of course, we call it American football. <laughs> and so, yeah, my knees um, started to, um, to really hurt. It was getting complicated. Um, yeah, also some uh, bones in my necks were um, giving me signs that uh, yeah, it was time to to go easy. And the doctors advised me to um, to go through um, sports that are uh, easier for the body, like uh, swimming uh, or cycling. Um, I was already running a little bit uh, back in time, so uh, I thought, okay, why not trying swimming and, and cycling, and then keep running, and then of course uh, I thought about triathlon. And since uh, I like um, uh, to give myself challenges, uh, I like competitions. So, yeah, I decided to, um, to start to, to train uh, um, to, for triathlon to, um, to race. And then I heard about um, different uh, races and especially uh, the, the Ironman races, which is uh, like the, the big distance that is kind of a, a big goal for many triathletes. And, uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's why and, uh, and where I started it. So, uh, slowly, uh, learning how to swim, um, getting better at cycling and, and running and, uh, and yeah, and that's it. I was a track lead. <laughs> I read that you weren't the best swimmer when you first started your half Ironman journey. <laughs> I think that's, yeah, that's, uh, uh, something that, uh, many, many, uh, track leads can, can relate. Um, swimming is, um, is really technical. Um, if you start when you're young uh, or if you have great abilities, uh, you can really uh, have fun and enjoy. Uh, if you start late uh, or if you're not uh, really um, into, uh, into technique uh, or if you're not helped, not coached, you can have uh, huge struggles. And um, first, I wanted to learn to swim by myself. And uh, basically for two, three years, I was just uh, at the same same level of uh, of trying to swim, but just being being slow and being tired and not going fast and very, very complicated. And um, yeah, only um, for a few months now, I'm, uh, I'm coached and, uh, and I have uh, a lot of great advices um, on, on the side of the pool that uh, help me to, uh, to see some progress. So slowly, slowly I'm getting there. But but still, it's uh, it's still really hard for me to uh, to swim uh, and be very comfortable uh, to to be able to uh, to go uh, kind of uh, fast uh, in the water. Now, how long did it take you from when you decided to do a half Ironman to when you actually accomplished it? So basically, I'm living in Aix-en-Provence, and this is uh, one of the few uh, French cities where we have a half Ironman race. So um, one day I was just seeing all this um, big uh, poster in the city saying like a uh, half Ironman is coming to town. So I was really curious. So of course, I went on a Sunday to see the race, and I and I saw all those athletes, all those athletes, and uh, and I was really inspired. I was like, whoa, that's that's impressive. That's that's what I want to do. So um, so yeah, quickly I uh, I realized that I should uh, aim for uh, this specific event in my city. So um, yeah, when I started it, um, I thought that to uh, register for the next year was maybe a little bit too early since I was um, I was not an athlete uh, back in time. It was 
yeah, I was coming from football uh, mm-hmm. and um, I was uh, playing in the uh, offensive line. Uh, so yeah, you can imagine that it's not the best uh, shape to be able to um, to swim, run and, and bike uh, fast. Mm-hmm. So it was, um, yeah, I, I decided to go slow and I started with the um, uh, triathlon of the uh, Olympic distance. So the Olympic distance is uh, basically um, almost a half of a half Ironman. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it took me, um, like three hours something to accomplish my first, um, so Olymp- Olympic distance triathlon. Uh, and then I decided the year after to, um, to just, uh, go for the half Ironman. So it took me two years actually from the day I started to the day I, I, uh, I did the, the distance and, uh, and finished the race. So your first half Ironman was in Aix-en-Provence? Yeah, that's it. What is your training regimen like? So back in time, I was just going with the flow. I was like, okay, I need to swim. Uh, Okay, when is the pool open? When can I go? Um, Okay, I can go this day, this day, let's do it. Then, uh, oh, uh, cycling. Well, let's uh, go on Sunday morning when there is no cars on the road and uh, enjoy the the free morning to uh, to go to go um, in the nature and uh, and just ride. And then uh, on the other days, let's, on the other days, let's just run. So it was kind of um, yeah, going with the flow, how I feel. But uh, quickly you realize that it's not really efficient. Um, and then if you want to um, if you want to have fun. I mean, that's actually what I think. If I want to have fun, uh, it's easier to um, to have a better level to then just really being enjoying um, uh, racing and uh, and sporting and not really uh, undergoing it and suffering from the, from the effort. So quickly, I decided to um, to be a little bit more serious. So I look for uh, I looked for plan um, online uh, online training programs. And uh, yeah, step by step, um, the level went um, a little bit more and more serious. Uh, and uh, and today, um, uh, I am uh, training uh, some on average uh, 12 to 15 uh, hours uh, per week, and uh, that requires that uh, you need often to train two times uh, per day. Uh, sometimes only one, sometimes three. And for example, today um, I woke up uh, early to uh, to do a, a home trainer uh, bike training, um, and then uh, it took me an hour. And then during my lunch break, uh, I went for a swim uh, in the pool, in the swimming pool. And then uh, after work, uh, I went for a quick run uh, in the neighborhood. And uh, yeah, that's that's how I can um, fit those training sessions in my uh, in my day, um, despite of uh, um, a big day at work that I have on the side. How long is each part? You start with swimming, you have running, you have the bike. You said you were on the bike for an hour. How far do you go? What's the distances? Yeah. So basically, if we let's, for example, focus on the on the bike, you to progress, you need to have different kind of trainings. Uh, You need to work on your on your cardio. And then uh, be able to do some uh, intensity workout. So intense means that you're gonna go really hard, and then uh, the the session can be short. So short is like an hour, and then um, on average you can easily do a 30k, uh, 35, uh, maybe even 40. So that would be a very intense workout. Um, then you also need to train uh, to train on endurance to be able to um, to bike for hours. Uh, because on race day, eventually you're gonna ride for hours, so you need to get used to that. So that's often a Sunday morning's program. Uh, it can be three hours, four hours, five hours, maybe sometimes more, uh, where the rhythm is gonna be way cooler. So um, yeah, maybe uh, 27 kilometer per hour for uh, four or five hours. That will be um, something. And then you can do in between. So a two hours training where you're going to put some intensity sometimes, then relax for 15 minutes, then five minutes intensity and so on. Um, so, yeah, that's for cycling. And basically, that's kind of the same ideas for uh, running and swimming. Um, well, you, you are not going to do uh, four hours or five hours uh, swimming sessions uh, unless you're really... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure it's a thing actually, <laughs> but um, yeah, of course, um, the longest, well, for swimming, the longest I will do would be an hour and a half max, and then a short one would be uh, 45 minutes, 
so the distance will be in between um, maximum uh, 3.5k and the minimum of uh, of 2k at least. Um, yeah, and for running, basically, um, short run can be uh, uh, 8 to 10k for um, 45 minutes an hour, and then the longest run. Actually, I'm not doing a lot of very long run because that's really uh, tires the body. So even if um, in a, a half Ironman, at the end, you need to run a, a half marathon, uh, which is uh, so 13 miles, mm -hmm. uh, 21.1K, um, I'm never going to train uh, running this distance. Uh, maximum will be 15, 17, 18K max, but not 21.1, because if I train, um, if I do um, such a long distance on training, it means that I will need one day or maybe two days even to recover after, to go very slower to, for my body to, to digest the, the big training sessions. And you don't want to spend two days uh, to recover from a training. Uh, it, would be, it would be a lot. So you're just going to run uh, 15K, 16K, just enough to, to train on the endurance of running. Uh, but then uh, the day after you can, um, you can uh, um, hit the bike again or, or jump in the pool and, uh, and have a good uh, training sessions. How many days are we talking about? How many days do you train? Well, every day. I mean, every day. Every day. So <laughs> seven days a week, 30 days a month, every day you train. You don't take well, a day off. No, yeah. There's day off. Um maybe a day off every 10 days, two weeks. Um, by day off, it will be a day where you will still go for a walk or something. Uh, and then on the, um, on the training day, um, we call uh, like rest slash recovery days where you're actually going to sport. So you're going to do a ride or a run, but you're really going to go easy. Mm -hmm. Like if you go um, cycling for two or three hours, you're really going to chill and just just relax. Just, uh, uh, yeah, just um, very easy. So, um, uh, and then it's important to um, to train by blocks, uh, which means that uh, if um, I'm having a, uh, let's take the example of what I'm having this summer. I'm having a two-month uh, training program, a very specific one for the next race. Mm -hmm. um, every month is divided in four weeks uh, where I will have three weeks uh, of uh, normal trainings. So with intensity, like what I described uh, just before. Right. And then the fourth week is supposed to be a week where you have to digest what happened before. Your Your body has to understand that, okay, that was three hard weeks. Uh, are you okay? Um um, so you're going to train, but uh, really listening to your body, um, less intensity, um, uh, a smallest amount of, uh, of training of hours, uh, to be able to, um, yeah, to recover a little bit. And then, um, the week after you start again on a three weeks, uh, uh intensity, um, hard, uh, program. So, so yeah, basically um, it's hard to say like, okay, I'm having a day off every week or every two weeks, but the idea is that you, you kind of listen to your body. You have a rhythm where you know that some days it's going to be uh, easier and you know that some weeks it's going to be easier. And then, um, you also supposed to, to have a break during the year uh, of uh, a week often where you're just not going to do a, a sport at all. Or if you do sport, it's really supposed to be something very different, like, uh, uh skiing or hiking where you're really going to disconnect uh, so yeah, that's, that's actually what, um, many, um, athletes do, um, triathletes, uh, do, uh, who have a, like a, a serious level. That's how they work. That's how they, they train. Now, what motivates you? Well, what's motivating me really, um, right now is to accomplish, um, an Ironman to go for the full distance. It's really something that I see as a, a life goal. It's such a huge investment uh, in time. We, we just talked about it. Um, but it's also, um, it's uh, some sacrifice. It's, um, yeah, it's hours, uh, all the hours I'm spending um, on my bike, uh, or hours that I'm not uh, spending with my, uh, with my, my family or, or my girlfriend. So it's really a lot of sacrifice. And, um, and the idea to succeed, to go until the end, is so it's so motivating to just be like, okay, there's this huge goal. It's big. I'm investing so much, but then, uh, when I will do it, I will be so proud because the mm -hmm. journey is, 
we're talking about years of uh, of uh, transforming myself, of uh, becoming uh, what I've always wanted to be, uh, which is uh, an athlete, to be healthy, be in shape, to end up with this uh, huge uh, uh, finish line of uh, the end of a huge chapter. It's it's really something that uh, every day I'm I'm like, okay, this this is what I want. This is what I want, and yeah, that's that's uh, that's the motivation. How long will it take to prepare for a full Ironman? So often uh, we're talking about um, a six to eight month where you're really uh, dedicated on a, a very specific training program toward these events. So um, yeah, everything that I described before is uh, like normal training um, with, uh, I was talking about 12 to 15 hours of, of training uh, per week. But then when you start the specific training program for the Ironman, uh, you are going to have some week where you will train um, 20 hours plus because, um, yeah, eventually at, during the Ironman, you have to, um, for example, bike 180K, so 112 miles. So at one point, you need to be able to uh, bike for uh, six, seven, eight hours because that's what's going to happen on race day. So your body needs to be to know what is this effort, what's the distance. So you're gonna have to include those kind of uh, of long training in your program. So yeah, the that's why the the last month, so the last six eight month of the the program are really yeah, it's retargeting uh, how the race will look like, and uh, and of course um, since the race is way longer, the the training sessions will uh, last longer. So what do you think? A couple of years? Say you do well in, in the next uh, half Ironman. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would be like two years before you could do it? The idea is that when I'm, um, I'm doing the half Ironman to get the experience, to, um, to, yeah, to have the experience, to be able to, to know that I can do the half distance. And the idea is then to immediately start to prepare for the full distance. So I'm aiming uh, next summer, uh, so 2022, to um, to do the Ironman. Really? So like yeah. a, this next summer coming up? Mm -hmm. So a year yeah. from now, roughly. Yeah, that's it. Wow. So yeah, basically um, I'm doing um, two half Ironman uh, in September. Um, and then I'm having uh, smaller events um, another big event will be a, a marathon in November. And that's a full marathon? Yeah, yeah, full mm -hmm. marathon. And then after that, I'm starting the specific uh, training program for, for the full Ironman, uh, so for the summer after, which, yeah, which will be uh, basically an eight-month uh, training plan, training program. Okay, so from when you started until next summer, how many years is that? Is that like four years? Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's exactly it. Four years, yeah. Because yeah, I'm because thinking of doing that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, just thinking four years. That's all I all I have to do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was about to start. Yeah, cool. Let's do it together. Which one? When? Where? <laughs> I'd love to. Maybe someday. Oh, why not? Maybe yeah, someday, man. Never too late. It's a great spot because you can start at any time and um, and also it's not too impacting. It's really, I mean, we're talking about swimming and, and cycling. Running is maybe the only tricky one where, yeah, you it can be um, it can be tough to uh, to run uh, every week for, for a while. But if you only focus uh, on getting getting ready um, in terms of uh, endurance uh, and then start the specific program, uh, I mean, swimming, cycling, running, that's... Yeah, that's that's doable for, yeah, from for many people. So uh, I think it's a really accessible sport. Yeah, no, I I agree. Now, how expensive is it? I mean, because do you have to have like a obviously you have to have a really good bike, but other than, you know, the training costs. Yeah, that's a real topic. I was talking about the sacrifice uh, just before. Well, that's another one because uh, this is an expensive sport, and I think that if I would have been aware. Uh, before to start of um, the investment that it represents, uh, well, okay, I will still be here, but uh, <laughs> but maybe, uh, well, we, yeah, okay, it will not change anything, but yeah, it's basically, you can start cheap. You can really start cheap. You can just um, have some running shoes, 
you're good for the run. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can go for uh, just uh, a second-hand uh, road bike that you can easily find for $300 on Craigslist, or, like no problem. Mm-hmm. And then uh, for swimming, well, just uh, yeah, just uh, goggles and uh, and you're good. And so, oh, well, and swimsuit that can help. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> you can really start. Um, you can really start cheap. But then the problem is that uh, you're gonna see that suddenly in events. Often the water is going to be cold, mm-hmm. and even if it's not that cold, you will realize that actually everyone has a wetsuit to swim, mm-hmm. and the wetsuit is an investment. We're talking about uh, yeah, two, three, four hundred uh, dollars. Right. Okay. Then you're going to start that um, your bike. Uh, it works, but uh, it's not really enjoyable because uh, it doesn't go really fast. It's a little bit painful for your bike because the geometry is kind of old. And nowadays there's a bike that is that are made in carbon, and suddenly it's so much lighter. So then when you climb, it goes faster. And then you're gonna start to look at the bike that looks uh, yeah a little bit brighter and uh, a little bit more expensive. And um, and that's when the problem starts because the bike yeah that's uh, we're talking about a few thousands easily. And then if you keep going, you're going to start to see that it's also a triathlon bike that are very specific. It's uh, We also call it a time trial bike where your position is uh, I.O. Because uh, in triathlon compared to um, to road cycling, you're in most of the distance, uh, so including half Ironman and Ironman, you are not allowed to... Um, to be behind the wheel of another cyclist to um, to because it, of course it helps in terms of uh, aerodynamics to uh, follow another rider and uh, that's uh, for example if we take um, the Tour de France you will see they will go in peloton mm-hmm. and uh, and save a lot of energy by staying in the wheels of others well you cannot do that in triathlon so the trick to uh, gain in terms of aerodynamics is to have a very specific bike where you will have very specific positions. And, uh, and of course, you see uh, everyone having that. So you're like, oh, I also want that. And now we are adding some, uh, some thousands uh, again on the bike. And then you will learn that uh, running shoes actually um, with all the kilometers or miles that you're running, you kind of have to change it every five to six months because uh, it's not good for your feet or for your ankles or your knees to run with old shoes. So you're going to start to change your shoes. And then uh, you're going to be like, oh, I want some sunglasses because when I'm running, it's sunny. But uh, oh, but the sunglasses can also work for the for the bike. But then, oh, it's specific sunglasses. And then you're going to be, oh, I want this helmet for the bike because uh, now when it's summer, and it's warm this one has a lot of holes and then it can, my head can breathe oh and then there's and this and this and this and then that's where the trap is mm. <laughs> there's so much to invest so much to to buy that uh, it's endless it's endless so yeah you can start from be staying cheap being serious just be like okay it's enough i have what i need i can just go or you can be tempted and see that actually you can have a lot of fun with the uh, all those um, different um, materials, and then uh, and then it's yeah, it can be very expensive. So it's basically up to uh, up to you or how strong you are uh, with not uh, looking at beautiful bikes and be like, oh, I want this one. <laughs> yeah, so it can be cheap to start, but it's obviously expensive to get the good stuff. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and really tempting. Yeah, right. What is the most <laughs> challenging part? of the half iron man for me um if we talk about my last uh, race so i did a half um iron man uh two weeks ago um and so the big challenge was to um to be able to keep up on the plan uh, I um, set um, some uh, some goals some uh, some targets uh, in terms of, of time and um, sometimes it can be really, really hard at the moment when you maybe feel a little bit weaker than what you thought, but you you see the the numbers on your watch or on your computer bike and you're not at where you want it to be or where you should be. So to be able to, um, to find the, the motivation, the energy to be like, okay, I'm supposed to push harder, so I'll do it. It can be it can be tough to um, yeah to reach the the target in terms of uh, the the energy the power that you you have to put. Um, also, I'm thinking about um, some really really basic aspect that are um, nutrition and um, and drinking water um, during the effort. 
um, it's not uh, it's sometimes not natural to um, to eat uh, or to drink while um, sporting so while cycling or while uh, running I'm not talking about swimming because obviously uh, eating while swimming I'm not sure it's a good idea <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's it's not natural so it can be um, a trap to um, to not drink enough or not eat enough while doing um, the race and since we're talking about a race that can last um, that last hours um, yeah we're talking about four five six seven hours you obviously you need to eat and drink so that can be um can be a trap and actually uh, i so yeah i um i fell in, in those two traps uh which were uh, i didn't drink uh and eat enough uh or what i should have and then also um it has been hard for me to keep up with the the pace that uh, that i set uh, to myself um, before the race so yeah th- those were def- definitely some challenging parts that uh, i had to face um uh, on my last race let's talk about that half iron man the one in Le Sable de Lone a few weeks ago. Well, first of all, how did it go? How did you feel that you did? Uh, well, <laughs> what an adventure. <laughs> I, yeah, so the, the target was to, um, to do the race uh, under five hours. Uh, I trained really uh, seriously uh, this year, and that was definitely the target. And um, yeah, I had the capacity to do it. Uh, unfortunately, um, we had a heavy rain. Uh, and uh, living in the south of France in a beautiful Provence, I don't ride under the rain. It's something I just don't know. <laughs> mm. So it was a new, suddenly, a, a, yeah, a new um, atmosphere, a new environment. Uh, so it was not the, the the best part, but yeah, I mean that's just that's just the way it is. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I fell in the trap um, only um, yeah a mile or two before the finish line of the um, of the cycling the bike. Uh, there were this turn on the left that uh, I slowed down, but apparently not enough, and then I fell um, on the ground. Uh, my head um, hit uh, hard the, the ground and. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it was really, really weird. Um, took me a few seconds to realize what just happened. Um, I have been able to go back on the bike. The bike was fine. Uh, I felt some uh, pain in my hip, but that was fine. I was able to um, to pedal, so okay. I had some scratch on my arms, but nothing bad. Um, and so I finished the bike, and then yeah, when I started to run, I realized that the 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 fall was um, had an impact. I was really um, having like nausea, um, headache, um, was not able to to see properly with the, the sun. It was really weird. It just reminded me um, those uh, good old uh, concussion that I had while playing football, you know, when you, when you hit, um, when you have big impact sometimes. So I definitely uh, had something there. Mm-hmm. So um, I, uh, I was just uh, like, let's just um, finish it. Uh, and go see the the, the medical tent uh, just after to see if there's anything uh, bad. But uh, let's just try to run. Let's just see how it goes, and we'll see after. Uh, so I've been able to finish the um, the half marathon, and so the half Ironman, uh, slower than what I thought, uh, 15 minutes slower at the end. So of course, at first I was disappointed because uh, I didn't reach the goal, because uh, I fell, because uh, yeah, it's, it's not fun to uh, to not go where where you want to go. Uh, but yeah, a few days after I realized that, uh, actually I've been lucky that, uh, my bike has nothing. Uh, I'm, do- uh, yeah, three days after I was already doing great. Uh, uh, just my hip is still a little bit painful, but that's just, uh, nothing big. Uh, and we're talking about, uh, uh, losing only 15 minutes, uh, after a, a big fall and, uh, having a weird, uh, uh, half uh, marathon at the end so it's actually kind of cool that i've been able to finish it so yeah now now i'm 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 fine i'm i'm even more motivated to um, to accomplish the the goal that i will set for the next race because i'm like okay now uh i, I kind of fail but uh hey that's fine i can uh, can rebound from that i can uh, i can do better next time so yeah so it's maybe it's it's even uh a bigger motivation now. It's okay. Um, now I need to do better and uh, and even better. <laughs> yeah. Now one clarification for our listeners: uh, Le Sable de Lone. Le Sable de Lone. Le Sable de Lone is on the west coast, so that's not yeah. really in the same region as you are. Yeah. Exactly. 
that's uh, indeed uh, in uh, in Vendée. Um, this is uh, the um, a city uh, by the sea. This is actually where the the Vendée Globe, the boat uh, race, starts from. Mm -hmm. um, and so, indeed, it's uh, not uh, at all in my um, in my region. It's uh, a total of um, eight hours driving or something like that. Um, but um, so we in France we have uh, four different half Ironman. So one is in my city, Aix-en-Provence. Uh, another one is uh, in Nice, and then uh, third one is in Vichy, in um, a little bit uh, north of uh, of Nice and Aix. And so Le Sable de Lone is the fourth one, and that's the only one where the bike is flat. Uh, all the others, uh, it's really a hilly road, and um, and I prefer when it's flat. So basically, I uh, I set this race as the main goal of the year because uh, it was really um, something that I, I knew I could uh, perform and give my best on. Okay, so let's go back to that for a second, all right? You mm -hmm. fall off the bike mm -hmm. and you hit your head and you're thinking, I don't know, what are you thinking at that point? What What's going through your head at the time? So I open my eyes and I see a volunteer um, next to me. And then I see that he doesn't really look at me, but more at my bike. And quickly I realized that it's because uh, me and especially my bike are in the middle of the road and there is uh, hundreds of other cyclists that are arriving very fast behind. Mm. So he was actually really in a rush to put the bike uh, on the side of the road. And so I was, that's the first thing that I remember of like the volunteer going to the bike and seeing the other uh, riders arriving. And then, um, so I try to stand up, it works. And then um, the volunteer asked me, how, how are you doing? So I say, I don't know, I don't know yet. Uh, I will go on the bike and then I will tell you. So I go on the bike and honestly, at that point, I'm like, okay, the bike is broken. So I'm gonna go on the bike, it's not gonna work and it's gonna be over. That's what I thought. Because many times you see when, uh, when, you, the bike, when you fall and the bike falls, there's something wrong with the bike. So that was my thought, but uh, no, actually the bike was fine, and so my, I, I, yeah, I immediately felt the the pain in my uh, in my hip, but uh, it was not painful enough to uh, to make me stop. It was really like just uh, okay, there is something, but uh, apparently it's not bothering me. It uh, I can go. So yeah, that's really the the focus at the beginning. It's like okay, how how can I go? Is the work work? Is the bike working? Yes. Uh, am I physically able? able? Apparently yes. So let's just ride, ride and see and see. And then the more I was going, the more I was like, okay, apparently um, all the, um, the lights are, are green. So let's just keep going. And uh, yeah, until I'm like, okay, so it took me um, a while to realize that actually, I think it's only when I started to run that I realized that my left arm was totally bleeding. Uh, I, I was, yeah, I just didn't feel it, but uh, it was actually uh, not, not pretty to look at. Um but yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how it happened. How fast were you going? I was going very slow. Um, the The turn was really uh, almost ninety degrees, and uh, it was raining. It was wet. Uh, there were uh, many volunteers that were doing a sign like "slow down, slow down," and uh, it was almost the arrival. So you don't want to fall at that point. So I was really going slow. I don't know my uh, my my speed, but. Um, to give an idea, um, so I was, uh, my average speed on the race was, um, 35 kilometers per hour. Uh, I don't have the, in miles per hour, I will not be able to say it. Yeah, I, I me neither. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. And, and so, uh, basically, um, I think I was really slow, like almost, uh, maybe 15, 20 kilometers per hour. So, so that's like when you are just chilling to uh, when you ride in town and uh, you're just going slow because there's traffic. So it's not fast. And yeah, and actually, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm lucky that I was not going faster because otherwise that could have been um, that could have been really bad. But yeah, I think because there were. Um, yeah, the, the, the road was so wet that I think uh, at that point, um, I, I don't know, I guess. Uh, yeah, I just didn't have luck because uh, there were a few guys in front of me and uh, we were all going at the same speed and I'm the only one who fell. So I guess, uh, yeah, some some planets were aligned and uh, I decided that it was my turn to fall. 
Okay, so uh, I'm doing some quick math here. Uh, 37 uh, kilometers per hour is about 22 miles an hour. And you said you fell at about 15, which is about still going like 10 miles an hour. And mm -hmm. it's not like you jump out of your car going 10 miles an hour. So uh, mm -hmm. I think we can all understand that. Now, you basically ran 13.1 miles. Well, we'll just say with a, with a heavy hangover or a, mm -hmm. uh, a bit of a woozy feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you still ran 13.1 miles in one hour and 50 minutes, 43 seconds. Yeah, there were, there were no way uh, I would stop. And my family, they came from, uh, so they are from the center of France. So they drove all the way uh, to come to see me. Um, my girlfriend did the trip with me. Uh, so many friends were really supporting me. I received so much love. It was so, so big. Uh, on social media, um, I have the chance to have a, a beautiful community on Instagram that were really supporting me before the race. At that point, I was like, I, it's just not possible. I just, uh, it's not possible. I, there were no way I would stop. So yeah, you just, uh, you just go. Uh, I was, I was not able to uh, to drink or eat because I really had this strong nausea. So it was nausea. So it was just. That's really what I remember. Like it was not comfortable, but uh, yeah, no choice. And I thought like worst, worst, worst case scenario, if there's really something wrong, it's actually the perfect environment to just uh, to just collapse. Because if right now I'm going in the street, I'm having a long run and I'm feeling so bad, but still I'm pushing, pushing. If I fall, there is high chances that uh, it's going to take a while before someone notice me. Uh, and even if, then what? Uh, time to call help. It's, it's actually, it's dangerous. I don't want to mm -hmm. do that. But on a race day, there is a volunteer everywhere. There is uh, there is doctors. There is a medical town. There is they are here for us. So uh, yeah, it was like worst case, I'm just uh, falling, and then uh, people are here to help me. So no, I was yeah, there was just no way I was stopping. Can you describe the feeling when you cross the finish line? So that was a very, uh, yeah, with all those uh, circumstances that we just talked about, the feeling was weird because um, I I wanted to, I didn't want to smile. I was uh, upset. I was uh, feeling sick. Because you could see your time. Is that why you were upset? Well, no. Well, yeah, the time, the fact that uh, I, I fell, the fact that the, the, the run was not fun, it really was not a good time. Uh, I mean, you have to imagine that you go to an event where there's a thousand of people, everyone is happy, smiling, cheering. It's the race you have been working for for a month. Uh, you know that at the end you're gonna have a meal, uh, you're gonna you're gonna drink, you're gonna celebrate. It's gonna be a great time, but you feel awful for hours. You just run a half marathon where you it was just not fun. All those people cheering, you felt bad because you were not able to smile to them because I was just not able. I, I wanted to, but I was just not able. So when I arrive, I'm like, okay, so I, I'm going to the doctor because obviously it's not normal to have this headache, to not be able to take off my glasses because the sun is, is too strong. Uh, mm -hmm. It was just something wrong. So obviously I'm going to the doctor. Um, so I see my time and uh, I'm like, yeah, of course, I, I knew it. Huh? I, I, was, uh, I lost time. But uh, because... Um, of the, all the people around and my family, I wanted to to be happy. So I wanted to smile. I wanted to be happy. Say hey, thank you. It was amazing. But okay, now let's just give me one sec to um to uh to see the doctor, make sure it's everything all right, and then let's just uh, celebrate uh, what we can celebrate. Uh, so that's how I felt. Um, but then when I look at the images, I was actually not smiling at all. I thought that I was giving a smile, like uh, hey, I did it, cool, thank you. And now I'm just gonna. I have a moment for myself to make sure it's fine and then uh, and then we'll talk. Um, so I really thought that I was kind of smiling, but I see the photos, I was like, no, there's no smile. I was, I think I was really in my world and uh, I was just like, okay, that was it. Uh, now let's uh, focus on health first and uh, yeah, and see after. And what did the, uh, what did the doctor have to say? So they're really uh, worried about the helmet. They really wanted to see uh, how was the helmet because um, if um, there were some like if the helmet was damaged, then they wanted to do a, a scan of my uh, of my head. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and unfortunately, the helmet was with my bike at the bike transition that was a, like kind of far from the finish line. Right. So it took us um, a long time before um, my family uh, went to the bike uh, to take the, the helmet, to bring it to the doctor for him to check and say, OK, it's fine. And during all this time, they were doing um, all those check, um, checks. And they, yeah, basically, um, they were a little bit worry uh, about my uh, my head because uh, indeed I was um, I was weird I was a little bit uh, slow um, and I was explaining what happened and then they were worried about it so um, I had all this, the check you can imagine that you can have from a doctor uh, after a race like the, the blood the uh, the way I was breathing um, tensions uh, all my eyes were reacting all of that um, they did a great job by the way um, Thank you. Uh, I, I want to thank them because uh, yeah, that's that's really uh, nice to have this uh, this uh, this support and uh, um, the help from the professional just after the race. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah, they they did all those checks. Was uh, all good. Uh, and then when they saw the helmet, that uh, actually uh, has no damage. Like uh, I fell on my head, but if you look at the helmet, it just looked like I didn't fall. So <laughs> that's yeah. um, that's actually a good thing. And so, yeah, they gave me the, the, the green light and I've been able to leave um, the tent. So basically after uh, after like a, a long hour, maybe an hour and a half uh, staying with them. How are you feeling now? So um, it took me three, yeah, two to three days to, um, to really be like, uh, okay, now uh, I'm normal again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm talking about like the muscle pain because huh? the headache was gone the day after. Um, the muscle pain from the effort uh, after three days I was good, but then uh, my hip. Um, so yeah, I, I felt yeah the the hip was really bad, like like a huge bump, really impressive. Um, and it, I'm st- I still have the bump. It's smaller, but I still feel it. But um, so uh, I've seen some um, some professional uh, physio and basically. Uh, I'm doing I'm doing what I what I have to do to um, get rid of it, and um, I can train normally uh, for a week now. Um, I just feel it when I feel my hip when I touch it, but not when I'm training. So so that's cool. Nothing is uh, nothing is broken. So so yeah, and and the scratch on the arms they are slowly healing, um, but it's clean enough to be able to uh, to swim in the pool. So yeah, it's it's all uh, all good. What were some of the differences that you saw between the 2019 half Ironman in Aix-en-Provence and the 2021 Les Sables de Lone? When I did the, um, the half Ironman of uh, Aix-en-Provence, so um, two years ago, uh, I was definitely not uh, as uh, athletic as today. Uh, I was not in shape. Uh, the, the transformation was uh, just at, the, at its beginning. Uh, so I was uh, super slow. Uh, I arrived uh, one of the last. Uh, so in the Ironman and uh, half Ironman races, you have a, a time limit. You cannot uh, finish uh, the event after a certain time. And in Aix-en-Provence, the limit was eight hours and um, 10 minutes or something like that. So I trained to be able to uh, finish in the time, uh, but not just in time, but like seven hours and a half. Then that was my goal. So I, I train. um to be able to do that, and uh, that's what happened. I actually, it actually took me uh, almost eight hours. So it was kind of short, but I, I actually was really fine. If I would have to go faster, I could have. Uh, I was really checking the time. I was like, okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. I can just go easy, and I'm fine. I'm fine. So, so I did a good management of the race, um, and uh, I was, um, I was super happy. I was really, really proud to uh, accomplish. Um, this um, high goal that I set to myself, it was really such a great feeling. Uh, that was when I crossed the finish line. A um, few minutes after, I got to know the um, the rank that mm-hmm. I really didn't mind. Uh, I mean, I, I was just uh, racing for myself. I'm not racing against anyone. Uh, and uh, it was just out of, out of curiosity just to see. And then when I, I learned that I was one of the last, it kind of felt a little bit like, okay, um, hmm. Uh, okay, I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm young. Um, I'm back in time. I was th- 31 years old, so I think I'm young. Uh, I thought I was uh, healthy, uh, mm-hmm. even if I was um, overweight. Um, I, I mean, being young and healthy. I would, uh, okay, one of the last. Okay, sure. 
um, that kind of um, triggered me. Like um, maybe maybe I can I can do better. Uh, at least try to do better because um, if I want to keep doing triathlon, and that's something that I felt like I wanted to keep doing, I'm not sure I will enjoy and have fun if I'm always finishing one of the last. Mm -hmm. It's not, uh, I mean, it's not uh, about the ego or beat the others, not that. It's just the feeling to know that uh, you're doing the minimum because you always finish at the time limit and one of the last. Right. And um, I think... I mean, I'm sporting. It's a passion. I have a, I have a job on the side. Triathlon is really, it's my passion. And I, I'm doing that to have fun and um, to create great times, great memories. So the idea to doing that, but every time being like, okay, um, I, I, it was hard. I struggled. I almost finished uh, at, at the time limit, one of the last. I'm like, it's not going to work. I'm not going to be able to do that for years. It's not fun. So, um, yeah, that's really what I remember from finishing the, the Ironman of, of X. And so basically, if you compare uh, what happened in Le Sable de Lon, so uh, eight hours versus five hours and 15 minutes. Okay, X was a little bit hilly uh, on the bike. So you, yeah, you, you cannot go as fast uh, for the same level, but still there is like a two hours and a half plus uh, difference. So you could expect that uh, the smile uh, will be bigger in the sable, but uh, as I explained, uh, unfortunately, uh, there were the big smile was not here. But um, I think I turned into a, a different way of thinking, where now I want to give the best of myself. I'm like I'm I'm passionate about it. Um, I love to do that, and uh, why not giving everything to just try to give the best, and then we'll see. Maybe after a little bit, I'm like, okay, I gave my best. It was fun. Now. Now let's move on to the next challenge. But uh, for now, I'm really like, let's give everything I have to see where I can go, what I can do. Let's talk about your vegan journey, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When and why did you transition to a plant-based diet? So I, um, I started to, um, to be uh, interested in the topic uh, four to five years ago. Uh, when I was still eating meat, but I was um, becoming vegetarian. Um, I just discovered about the animal abuse. Um, I discovered what it was. Uh, so images, um, read articles, and, uh, and uh, quickly realized that it was wrong. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. So from that moment, I um, I decided to stop to uh, to eat uh, meat and to uh, to eat animals basically. So I uh, became vegetarian. So it I I yeah I was uh, vegetarian for two years something. Mm -hmm. But um, while getting to understand the the big picture and um, and what animal abuse is, I realized that actually as a vegetarian, you still participate in, in some stuff that I wasn't really uh, agree with. Mm -hmm. um, I started to have uh, values that like, for example, I don't want to uh, to participate in um, in animal abuse. I don't want to be part of it. And, um, and the idea, if your values is to try to align uh, your behavior to your values. Right. Um, so yeah, slowly, uh, I realized that it was just not possible to, to eat dairies. Uh, uh, even if I, I was um, a cheese lover, like many French people, uh, the way it's made, I was just not okay. So um, I became vegan. So that's um, two years ago now. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what happened. Uh, how I became vegetarian and then uh, and then vegan. Uh, that's the, the the main reason. And then um, on the way on the journey, you you discover that it's way more than just what we well not more, but it's a, there's a bigger picture with um, the what it represents also for um, for your health. What means uh, eating animal products or animals? What it does to your health uh, to your body? Uh, I didn't know, but uh, I. I I read articles, I watched documentaries, I um, I talked, I yeah, I read a lot of stuff, and I realized that actually maybe it's unhealthy uh, mm -hmm. to uh, to eat like this. Um, and then I learned about um, the consequences uh, for our planet, for the environment. Mm. And and when you start to see all of that, um, there is just um, no no reason to actually. Uh, have a behavior that uh, creates um, that is not aligned to um, the way you the way you think and what you want. 
Um, so it was in that sense, it was it was easy to switch from vegetarian to vegan because uh, there is just no yeah, there's just no no way to do differently. It's like it's uh, I don't want to compare because it's very different. But earlier I was saying that uh, when I started to run the half marathon, uh, despite of the of the pain and everything, um, because uh, uh, so many people came to support me, there was no way I was disappointing them. Mm-hmm. There was no way I was just doing it. And here it's the same. I mean, for everything that it represents, that for what it represents to it cheese, what does it mean? What happens to uh, to the co and uh, and what uh, what is done? There is just no way I'm eating it. There's no way. And in that sense, it's uh, it was a, an easy switch. Um, that yeah, that I made uh, two years ago now. How difficult is it to be vegan in France? We all know that the French they love the cheese, mm-hmm. yeah, and mm-hmm. even some of the wine. It yeah. might not be vegan. Yeah, exactly. Um, I have the chance that um, that my girlfriend is um, is a cook. Um, she is talented. She uh, we had this, the transformation of becoming vegetarian and then vegan in the same time. It was really um, a team um, uh, process to um, to educate ourselves and uh, and uh, and have this change. And uh, I have the chance that uh, she is a great cook. Uh, so I'm eating uh, excellent uh, lunch and dinner, and it's yeah, it's just so easy for me because she loves to cook and she cooks very well so it's it's amazing but um yeah of course um it's because we like 90 percent of uh, everything we eat is uh is um is 100 percent. it's not industrial it's uh it's plant days that really um uh, we use the the veggie and the fruit and the, and the beans and uh, and we cook with that uh, that's also because we don't have uh, a lot of um, vegan uh, industrial uh, products uh, in France. Um, it's it's arriving slowly, slowly. But um, for example, um, if I if I name brands, um, there is this, uh, for example, Beyond Meat thing. Mm-hmm. Um, there is uh, Ben and Jerry's that uh, also do, or Magnum that do some uh, some vegan ice cream. Uh, there is yeah, some, you want to uh, stay away from that. That Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> <laughs> trust me <laughs> trust me i don't think you want that in your training regimen <laughs> it can be tricky <laughs> uh, you have also some uh, some fast food chain or restaurant that have vegan options uh, i know um uh, in the in the states or north america and even uh, actually in, in germany or, or netherlands or the uk it's it's really it's already something there but not in france we don't have that yet mm-hmm. so in that sense uh, it's not easy. If you want to go outside to the restaurants, they don't understand. They they just, like I'm saying, 90% they just don't understand. They will ask, okay, so what do you want, eggs? No, that's not how it works. <laughs> you, <laughs> you said, you, yeah, it's it's very complicated. You go to the... Um, to the to the store. Uh, so as I said, there's not those, uh, those brands that, um, that have um, those uh, vegan products. Uh, but it's slowly coming. You you have some uh, you still have some stuff, uh, some uh, local uh, bio store that have some products. Uh, sometimes some brands are, are arriving on on the market. Um, some there now we have discovered recently there's a vegan cheese brand that is now in store. So it's slowly coming. Uh, I was talking about Ben Jerry's. Um, unfortunately, uh, I I know where it is because we have uh, that in the store since a few months now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can say I had the chance to discover, but uh, <laughs> take it easy on that. That's not going to help you. <laughs> it's so tricky because you know when you have been sporting uh, six hours on a Sunday, you're like, okay, I deserve an ice cream. I, I can <laughs> yeah. have it. Come on, I deserve it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's no way I don't deserve it. <laughs> or even when you're not doing any kind of wretch training <laughs> and it's a Sunday. I deserve it. Yeah. Little Ben and Jerry's yeah. ain't gonna help. Exactly. I would just run an extra mile tomorrow. But actually it's 30 extra miles that you need, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's the one thing though, right? That you can't outrun, you can't out exercise a bad diet. Yeah, 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 totally. Good. And that's the that's what I experienced because um, so yeah, I'm I'm coming from uh, so when I I was uh, so four years ago when I started to be vegetarian, uh, I was um, I was overweight uh, and uh, since that day and today um, I lost uh, fifty kilos, so that's uh, uh, more than a uh, hundred pounds, and um, wow. I was already uh, training. Um, 
as I as I said, I was training um, like kind of seriously um, three four years ago, even if it was not as much as today. Uh, and um, but I was not losing weight. I was not losing weight because uh, I was eating just uh, yeah, just uh, yeah, vegan Ben and Jerry's. Even if it was existing, I mean, there was always something else. You know, you can have uh, easily vegan popcorns or Oreos or there's all the stuff out there. If you really want to have some unhealthy food, you're gonna find it, right. even if it's vegan. So I just had bad habits and, um, and it was tough. Uh, and so, yeah, indeed, indeed, when you start to learn, uh, what is food, what, it, what eating means, like it's, it's to fuel your body. Uh, that's the, the main role. So when you know that this is the goal and to fuel, you need those kind of thing in those kind of quantities at that moment of the day, that's how it's supposed to be. And then if you follow the plan, but suddenly it's a big change. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, wow. Oh, but oh, now I'm not hungry anymore. And uh, oh, it's feeling. And uh, oh, and I feel better. And okay, hmm, interesting. So yeah, that's really, that's really a thing. What changes did you see both mentally and physically after you've changed to being vegan? So yeah, uh, so 100 pounds lost. So physically... Uh, <laughs> That's the difference. Right. Um, I um, I have. I mean, I don't have clothes anymore that uh, suit me. <laughs> it's. Uh, I I need to go shopping like seriously soon because um, I, I don't have a lot to wear. <laughs> so that's a big physical change. Um, yeah, it's. Um, that's a good problem to have, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> it's really. You know, when I was. Um, Still uh, eating uh, dairies uh, or even uh, when I was eating animals uh, back in the days, and I was I, w- I wanted to be healthy. I wanted to to eat well. But um, so now we're talking about the diet. But the problem is that um, you put this rule to yourself, and um, it's so easy to break the rules because you're like, uh, okay, now I'm gonna eat this and this, and uh, it's gonna be serious. And then after five days, you're like, oh. I'm just, okay, just today, I'm just going easy and uh, okay. But uh, the good thing with um, being uh, vegan uh, and when you live in a city where there is not a lot of temptation on uh, unhealthy vegan food, because unfortunately it exists, (laughs) but if there is not that much temptation and uh, you, 90% of your food is healthy, it's, uh, it really helps to, um, to mentally um, also stay on track and um, and be like if uh, if I'm not eating uh, unhealthy uh, non-vegan food, is not because it's not because um, I'm uh, I have to I, mean, I have to be strong I have to stay motivated. No, it's because I don't want to. I I just don't want to. I don't want to participate uh, to what it means. And in that sense, it's easy because uh, if you don't want to do something and no one forces you or push you to do it, well, no problem. I don't want to do it. No one asks me to do it. I'm just not doing it. And in that sense, it's really mentally, it really helped to uh, to have this switch and not being like, oh, oh, no, I want to have that because uh, I deserve it because I've sported so much. No, it doesn't exist anymore. It's uh, it's you. You don't want to. So that's really really helping to basically have a motivation of uh, not eating those products, not only because it's not going to help my health, but because you don't want to, because it means it represents something that you're against. And that's, uh, for me, that was the, the key element of this, uh, of this uh, change of, and this uh, physical and mental transformation. What did your friends think when you decided to go vegan? <sighs> that's, uh, that's still a sensitive topic. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I I don't have um, many many friends, but I have some uh, some great friends. And um, when um, I uh, so my best friends are not living in the same city as I am, uh, but I have the chance to uh, to see them often because uh, uh, I'm um, often on the road for for my job, mm-hmm. and so we often um, see each other. And uh, so yeah, when I switched to uh, to become vegan um, a few years ago, uh, and uh, we were meeting at restaurants, so of course um, you have to anticipate. So I found a vegan restaurant. Uh, where I could eat um, something without any problem, and then uh, they could also discover and everything. But at the very beginning, uh, it was just um, they were just making fun. Mm-hmm. They were making fun because 
I mean, when you say that um, cow milk uh, is for baby cows and uh, and it's not for us, I mean, pff, that's just a lot because it's like, okay, uh, since when? Uh, when you explain uh, why uh, this is uh, unethical to um, to do what it's done um, in a slaughterhouse, well, they just like yeah, but that's just how it is. That we need to we need to eat. I mean, they just have all the the classic and the normal. Um, well, not normal, but uh, yeah, the classic answers that uh, many people have in our society because we are just used to. It's just how it is, and that's and that was really hard to to have those um, those close person that just make fun. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really tough, and um, I had the same experience at work. But maybe at work it was easier in the sense that uh, it's co-workers, so that's that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and then the family um, at the beginning it was uh, not really understanding and uh, thinking that it's just a phase, like uh, okay now you it's like this, like before you were playing football. Uh, so mm-hmm. now you do triathlon, so maybe in five years you're gonna eat differently. It's just mm-hmm. a phase. It's just okay. So that's I think what they thought. Um, but quickly they understood that it was serious. It was just a change in mentality and it was more than just, uh, something, uh, trending or I don't know. Um, but then the beauty of it, uh, even if, uh, it's still sensitive in the sense that, uh, we are not there yet, but, uh, one of my coworkers is almost vegan now is vegetarian, but, uh, really trying to be vegan. And he was the one who, uh, three years ago was laughing because like, oh, now you eat grains. Well, now he's vegetarian and vegan because um, because of the animal abuse that he realized because of all talk and he was like, okay, oh wow, so that's that's big. My my mom, uh, my dad, my sister, they are all talking about vegetarian vegan. They are reducing the 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 amount of animal products uh, drastically. Uh, my dad even have some improvement in his health. Um, my uh, big sister, who just had a baby uh, six months ago, is seriously into uh, okay. How how does it work if you want to educate your your baby um, as a vegan? Uh, is it uh, is it yeah? She's like uh, getting to understand uh, how it works if it's possible and everything. And uh, yeah, and then I realized that oh, actually uh, yeah, it's um, it's um, yeah, it has an impact. Um, my uh, my friends, um, my my great friends, they are also. Now, not making fun, but uh, understanding, being aware, and also reducing the amount of um, of um, animal products that they they consume. So even if we are not there yet, and and I mean I'm not um, expecting or hoping anything. Um, I mean it's it's up to them basically. I'm, I even if I'm indeed uh, often uh, sharing my thoughts uh, and when they ask, uh, I'm not pushing anyone to do anything, but just um, to see them. Uh, making those changes, it's actually, uh, I think it's actually a good thing and it's uh, it's, it's beautiful and uh, maybe that's actually why they are my friends and my family. Mm. So that's, it's really, it's, it's a beautiful thing at the end. I mean, you lost 110 pounds, 50 kilograms? Mm-hmm. I mean, they must have at least seen that. I mean, just looking at yeah. your pictures on Instagram from mm-hmm. 2019 crossing the finish line to mm-hmm. 2021 crossing the finish line, you look like a totally mm-hmm. different person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for many people, when they see such a big um, uh, weight loss, they often uh, associate it with um, like uh, it's unhealthy. Right. It's like, oh wow, it's so much uh, weight loss so quickly. Well, it's actually not that quickly. It's it's years of uh, hard work because um, the 50 kilos I haven't lost that in two years. Uh, 50 kilos is uh, in the in the last years uh, my heaviest weight to uh, to today, uh, but of course they will uh, compare the the me that I knew and the actual me and they will see the huge difference uh, like you just described and they will feel like uh, it's uh, it's unhealthy it's dangerous it's wrong because uh, ooh, we're not used to what happened you're not eating anymore uh, or oh, maybe you're doing too much in sport it's often more like worries and questions. Because uh, it looks uh, unnatural somehow, while actually uh, I gain muscles. So I lost 50 kilos, but I gain kilos of muscles. So the the lo- the weight I lost is just fat. And I mean, from what I know, uh, having excess of fat is not uh, good for your health. So 
it's it's obvious that I'm a healthier person and that um, I'm I'm way better now than before. But um, I yeah, it's not really the feedback that I have. Um, but uh, I'm actually not um, expecting anything. I mean, I'm doing it for me, for for my health, uh, to feel good, not for um, not for people to tell me. So it's it's fine. What is one habit, hack, or tip? that helps you stay on track with your plant-based diet? Um, I think the key is to anticipate uh, what uh, you uh, plan on eating for the, the, the days coming. Um, for that at home, uh, we basically uh, plan what we're going to eat uh, for the, the week coming. And uh, when we do groceries, we buy what we need. So basically, there is no uh, big surprise. Of course, we can make some changes and we can switch days or even if we feel like uh, ordering food or going to the restaurant, there's always room for that. But we have a plan. We know what uh, we are supposed to eat. And that's definitely help because uh, otherwise, uh, when you're done working a little bit late uh, or when you're done training a little bit late and, um, and you're hungry, uh, often you you are not looking at the the good food because you can be uh, influenced by how you feel. So it can be tricky. But by having the food already, I mean at least the ingredients already prepared and the food uh, ready, that's definitely uh, helping a lot uh, to uh, to yeah to be able to to eat healthy. Now, is there a cookbook or a book that you've gifted to someone who is transitioning to a plant based diet? Well, yeah, actually, I have the, the No Meat Athlete Cookbook uh, by uh, Matt uh, Frazier and uh, Stephanie uh, Romain. Romain. Um, that's, um, I like this book because uh, it's um, really um, targeting to, um, to athletes, uh, endurance athletes. Um, so it's a good way to, um, to know what kind of uh, a snack uh, or lunch uh, dinner you can, uh, you can have um, for while, while you sport. Because often that's the worry. It's like, okay, I can, okay, eating like this, okay, sure. But uh, I am sporting, I'm an athlete. Is it still okay? What can I eat? So that's a good one. That's a good one that I like to share. What about the Game Changers? Have you seen that documentary? Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course, I've seen it. Um, I was really, um, so I heard about it coming um, a while before um, to, to watch it, and I was really waiting for it and curious. And um, yeah, it's fine. It's, um, it's really, um, I think it has opened some eyes um, to many um, athletes uh, or, yeah, sport uh, people who just... Uh, Maybe are not aware that um, that uh, you can uh, totally uh, perform and um, and fulfill yourself in sports uh, while uh, eating plant based. Uh, I think it has opened a lot of minds indeed. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I've enjoyed the documentary. Finally, can you give me one word to describe how you felt before you became vegan, and one word to describe how you feel now that you are vegan? Hmm. Um, maybe before being vegan, uh, maybe I could say, um, I was, um, unaware, like, um, kind of, uh, not seeing properly, not really knowing, uh, what was, uh, what was happening. Um, and then, uh, now I would say I'm, uh, I'm awake. Uh, in a sense that um, I am, um, I'm aware of what's going on around me. I uh, and I am also taking action. So it's not, it's not just being aware. It's being awake in a sense that um, I'm, uh, I'm taking actions. I'm not just uh, being like, oh yeah, this is bad. No, I'm like, this is bad, and that's why I'm going to do this way. So yeah, that's. I think those two words um, describe well uh, how I felt and how I feel now. So unaware and awake. Great. That's man. it. I, I love that. Love that. <laughs> it's such a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for taking the time. What's the best way for people to follow you on Instagram or the web or social media in general? Yeah. So, uh, well, first, uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's such a pleasure to be able to, um, to talk about, um, this uh, topic that is, uh, so big, uh, and so important uh, to, to me, to, to us. 
and to be able to share it um, with people um, uh, out there is uh, is just great. So so thank you. And um, and indeed, if um, if people want to um, to reach me out, uh, they can find me on Instagram. So uh, it's uh, Manu uh, dot Ndo. So M A N U dot N D O. Uh, so that's my name on Instagram, and uh, I'm sharing about uh, my training, my journey to become an Ironman, and uh, and some nice food that uh, I can uh, that I'm also uh, eating. And uh, yeah, it's it's good vibes uh, about uh, about sport, but uh, the vegan lifestyle. So um, I'm always happy to uh, to talk about um, all this topic uh, around sport and and the and the plant based uh, and vegan lifestyle. So anyone just feel free to uh, to DM me uh, and uh, yeah, I would be very happy to, uh, to to talk with you guys. Right, great stuff, Manu. Thank you again for being here on Plant Your Seed. Oh, thank you, Fred. Hope you are inspired by this story. And remember, it's never too late to plant your seed. Links to everything we talked about on the podcast can be found on Instagram at plant.yourseed in the show notes tab in the bio. If you enjoyed the show, remember to leave us a review. And until next time, thank you for listening.